In this video, we're going to continue the, uh, the second part of the general education mathematics let reviewer for numbers 11 to 20. And we're going to discuss the solutions of these items. So here's the problem for number 11. In how many ways can seven students be seated in a round table? So let's find out the answer. So the answer for number 11 is 6 factorial. So how do we get that answer? So the formula for this is p equals n minus 1 factorial. p stands for the permutation and it's, it's not the usual permutation formula but it's actually a circular for circular permutation. It's given that it's a round table so it's circular and so uh, by the way what's permutation permutation is an arrangement of objects where the order matters so if you say one two three it's different from three two one and it's also different for combination if you say combination the arrangement one two three and three two one are just the same because they are just the same set of objects it's composed of one two and three so let us continue. Let's substitute n by 7 because there are 7 students. So 7 minus 1 is 6. So it's 6 factorial. And that's why the answer is 6 factorial. Now, what does it mean by uh, 6 factorial? Does that mean we're going to shout 6? Because it's an exc exclamation point. So it's actually not like that. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's the meaning of 6 factorial. And then if you get the product of this, you will know the number of ways we can arrange the 7 students in a round table. And there are 720 ways. But it's actually not anymore necessary because in the choices, it's not um, the exact value. It's not expanded. It's in a factorial notation. So the answer is 6 factorial. So let's move to problem number 12. A box contains 3 red, 4 blue, and 5 white balls. If one ball is drawn at random, what is the probability that it is a blue ball? So let's find the answer. The answer for this is 1 third. So how do we get 1 third? So to find the form and the probability of taking a blue ball is to use this formula for the usual formula for probability. So the number of event on the numerator. So the event here is the blue ball because that's what we want to acquire over the total number of results. So there are four blue balls and then at the denominator, we're going to add all number of balls. So it's 3 red plus 4 blue plus 5 white. And that total is 12. So it's 4 twelves. But the answer is 1 third. So how do we get 1 third? 4 twelves can be reduced because numerator and denominator are both divisible by 4. So we can reduce it. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. And so the chance to get a blue ball is one third. So let's have problem number 13. In how many ways can a president, a secretary, and an auditor be selected from a group of seven? So let's find the answer. The answer for this is 210. So how do we get the answer? Now, this is a, an arrangement problem, so it's either a permutation in a, or a combination. So, you will know that it's a permutation because there is a position given to president, secretary, and an auditor. So, that means if you're going to interchange their positions, let's say the president becomes the auditor, and the auditor becomes the president, it's another set of group. So, the order matters in this problem. So that means we're going to use the permutation formula where it's n factorial over 
uh, n minus r factorial. So there are seven for n. There are seven uh, people that can be selected out of these three positions. And the r is the number of positions. It's three. So we're going to subtract seven and three. It's four. So we have seven factorial over four factorial. And then we will expand to simplify. So 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then to make it easier, we're going to uh, reduce or cancel those the same numerator and denominator like 4, 3, 2, and 1. So what's left is 7 times 6 times 5 which is 210. That's why the answer is 210. Now let's have problem number 14. A coin is tossed three times in succession. What is the probability of getting a tail on the first toss and heads on the other succeeding tosses? So let's find the answer. So the answer for this is 1 8. So how do we get 1 8? So to find the probability, let's um, analyze first the problem. It's finding the probability when the first toss is a tail and the remaining two tosses will be heads. So the first toss should be a tail. So we're going to get the probability of having a tail. Then times the next toss will be it must be heads so that's why we get probability of getting heads and then the third toss must be head so let's we will multiply it with the probability to get another head so this is how you get the probability when it is given the exact result that it must be tail head head so equals so probability of getting a tail is one half because it's one tail and there are two uh, poss possible results it's heads or tails times another one half because heads is also one and there are two results possible results heads or tails the same as the third one so we're gonna multiply all these three and the result is one eight so it's uh, the the answer is one eight. So we have problem number 15. In an examination, 25% of the students failed in mathematics and 32% in English. If 9% of the students failed both subjects, find the percentage of students who passed both subjects. Okay, so let's find out the answer. So the answer is 52%. So how do we get the answer? Let us illustrate it using this rect, uh, rectangle. So this rectangle represents 100%, meaning all the students, both who failed and passed the math and English subject. And this circle represents those who failed in math. And then this circle represents those who failed in English. So this is what you call a Venn diagram. And then it's given that it's 9% of the students failed in both subjects. So we're going to put 9% in between. And then it's given also that there are 25% of students failed in math. That includes the 9%. So how much is lacking? It's 16%. So that means there are 16% who failed in math only. But they pass in English. And then for the English, there are 32% failed in English. So how much is lacking? Since we already have 9%, that is 23%. So that means there are 23% who failed in English, but still they, fa they pass in math. And then outside these two circles will be those who pass both math and English. And that's what we are looking for. And so, let's compute. So the 100% will be subtracting 
uh, will be subtracted by the those who failed in math in both subject and in English. So the sum of these three will be 48%. It will be subtracted uh, from the 100%, and that is 52%. That means there are 52% uh, of the total passed both math and English. So problem number 16, what is the least number of students needed for the different activities if the teacher wants to form groups of 6, 8, or 10? So let's find out the answer. The answer for this is 120. So how do you get 120? So we use LCM. So this 120 is the LCM or the least common multiple of 6, 8, or 8, or 10. So how to get the LCM or least common multiple? So there are three ways to do that. You can do listing or prime factorization or the fastest, which is the continuous division. So let's do it. So let's put 6, 8, and 10. And then we're going to think of a number that can divide at least two of them. It can be all three or it can be at least two numbers that can be divided by this number. So actually there, all these three can be divided by two. So let's divide. So again, let me emphasize that not necessarily the whole three will be divided by the number that you will put. It can be two of these three numbers. And that's enough. Okay, so let's continue. Let's divide six by two. It's three. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And then we're going to continue to look for a number that can divide at least 2 of the 3. But since all these 3, 4, and 5 don't have any common number, so let us now get the LCM by multiplying the results. So the 2, 3, 4, and 5 will multiply it, and the product is 100. Problem number 17. Two bells ring at 8 a.m. For the rest of the day, one bell rings every half hour, whereas the other rings every 45 minutes. What time will both bells ring at the same time again? So let's find out the answer. So the answer for this is 9.30 a.m. So how do we get this answer? First is we need to know the least common multiple of the, the duration or the time, 30 minutes and the 45 minutes. So we'll get the least common multiple. So 30 minutes is the give, in the given it's half hour. So it's the same as 30 minutes. Now let's use the continuous division to get the least common common multiple of this 30 and 45. Both are divisible by 5, so we'll divide it. 30 divided by 5 is 6. 45 divided by 5 is 9. Let's continue. 6 and 9 are div both divisible by 3, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then let's continue. We're going to multiply now all this 4 because there are no more common divisor for 2 and 3. So 5 times 3 times 2 times 3 will be 90 or 90 minutes. Or it can be written as 1 hour and 30 minutes because 1 hour is 60 minutes. So it's 60 and 30. Now the time they begun is 8 a.m. So I'm going to add this 1 hour and 30 minutes so it will be 9 30 a.m. and that's the answer for number 18 if f of x is 2x squared plus 1 what is the value of f of x when x is negative 1 so let's find the answer so the answer is 3 and this is very simple. So let us copy the given f of x is 2x squared plus 1. And it's given that x is negative 1. So we're going to replace x by negative 1. 
so it's going to be f of negative 1 where 2x squared becomes 2 times negative 1 squared plus 1 so we just copy the plus 1 and then we are going to get the square of negative 1 so square means we multiply it by itself negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 and then we multiply 2 times 1 is 2 so it will be 2 and then copy the plus 1 and then it combines so 2 plus 1 is 3 so f of negative 1 is 3 and that's the answer Number 19, given that f of x is 2x minus 5, what is the value of f of 3? So let's find the answer. The answer for this is 1. So how do you get the answer 1? So it's similar to number 18. So we copy the given function 2x minus 5. And then we replace x by 3 because it's given that it's f of 3. So it's going to be 2 times 3 because we replace x by 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 minus 5 is 1. Number 20. Given that f of x is 3x plus 2 and g of x is 2x minus 3, what is the sum of f of x and g of x? So let us find the answer for number 20. So the answer is 5x minus 1. So how do we get the answer? So it says, what is the sum of f of x and g of x? So if you say sum, we're going to add the two functions. So f of x plus g of x, which is equal to, so the f of x is 3x plus 2, then plus the g of x, which is 2x minus 3. And then we combine 3x and 2x, that's 5x. Also combine 2 and negative 3, that's negative 1. So it's 5x minus 1. So thanks for watching and I hope you have learned from this part 2 video. And check out for the next uh, part, the part 3, which is numbers 21 to 30.